Dave Ramsey, very famous, very well known. Clearly, according to him, has bought and sold thousands of homes and um, and is the guy you want to follow. And he says credit cards are bad and that you should never have one. You should chop them up. You should avoid them literally like they're the plague. They are the but, devil. Yeah. But I've heard you, Nathan, on many occasions telling people not only should you have one, but you should have two of them. Why are you right? Oh, the horror. Two devils and, in your and, pocket, not just and why one. why is he wrong? So first. Because, clear, because clearly he's he's built an audience telling people just pull cash out of your pocket. Right. So, so to be clear, I've said at least two, not just two. I think two is the minimum number you should have. Three or four might even be better in most cases. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go back and say a credit card is a tool. It's not just, you know, some object that's obviously evil. It's a tool and it's a great tool for building credit. And let's be clear, if you want to go out and buy a car, you probably don't have thirty five or forty thousand dollars in the bank to write a check. And that means you're well, going maybe, to- maybe you should just wait. Well, that would be nice, but if your car just broke down, we can argue later on in a different story about whether it's actually a good idea to buy a used car or to buy a new car <laughs> with the actual cost effectiveness. Let's put that to the side. Whether you're buying a $5,000 car or a $50,000 car, if you don't have cash on hand, you're going to have to use credit. You want a credit card to build credit because you need credit for those big purchases in life until you have saved up enough money to pay cash for them. By the time you're, you know, when you're 21 or 22, you're not going to have enough cash on hand to go out and buy a car or a house. You're going to need credit. And by having a good credit score, those things are going to cost you far less and you're going to be able to build wealth in the long term. So, so, so really, explain, that so a little really, bit more. Uh, explain that a little bit more. You said it's going to cost a lot less. The price for the actual item isn't going to change. Explain how much the interest rate changes based on your credit score and how much that really means in the life of the loan or even in individual monthly payments? Sure. So if you have great credit, you're going to qualify for the best rates. And sometimes those are even special teaser rates. You might get it as low as 0% or 2% interest rate if you have pristine credit. Now that means you're actually doing far better than inflation. And so technically speaking, from a math perspective, you'd be better off taking the loan than paying cash over time. Now, if you have a bad credit score, your rate could be in the 12 to 15% rate, maybe even higher. Now, if you take a look at that, even on a $20,000 loan, the difference between a 2% interest rate and a 15% interest rate is gonna be huge, a few hundred dollars a month over the course of 40, 50, 60 months. That's a lot of money. And that's money that you could be saving, putting in your checking account, putting in your savings account, putting towards any debts you still have that you're trying to pay off, like a student loan, anything. And that there's a lot of use for that money if you're not paying it towards interest because you had a great credit score. It sounds to me like you're you're posing a very dystopian future where in order to get good debt, you have to have debt. And if you don't have debt, you can't get good debt, at which point you got bad debt, which means you're in debt further. Now, this brings us perfectly right back to the original question. Why have two credit cards? What I'm saying is you don't actually need debt to build credit. There's this, the funny differences. If you have credit cards and you use them in a very specific way, you build credit, but you never carry debt and you never pay interest. So it doesn't cost you anything to build that score. Well, not all credit cards are free. Some actually have annual fees. They do. Those are the ones I would avoid. Go for one with 0% fee for what I'm talking about. You want no annual fees. You don't care about the interest rate. You don't care about the rewards. You don't care about any of that stuff. All you want is a cheap card that you can use to put a charge on it every month and pay the bill. That's the only thing that matters. That and and reporting to the credit bureaus, which 99.5% of credit cards will do. All right. What, why should I believe what you're telling me? G- give me some like details of why what you're saying has any weight of factual truth. Uh, well, we'll start with I got a chance to study a million credit files. That was what I started with. Then I got another million. Then I got a 10 million sample set. 
I did statistics and analysis across the board on these credit files. Now, Are you is, saying you actually got a million or it was just a lot? No, I got a literal million. That was what we paid for for the usage. Bought a million. A year later, we got another million to use for study. And a year later, I got 10 million to use for study. And the one. Oh, so, so, you, so what you're telling me is you just didn't watch another YouTube video <laughs> to tell you this? You didn't read five I read, blogs? I read a bunch of blogs. And I also read them and realized that they were mostly wrong. <laughs> okay. I did this study firsthand. This is me doing my analysis using statistical tools to understand what comes up. And those things come up. If you have three credit cards and you have less than a 10% uh, utilization on them and you pay them every month, nearly everyone who does that has a great credit score. Nearly everyone. And when I say great credit score, I mean 780 or above. You're 780? using your credit rate. 780? 780 or above, nearly everyone. And on the other side of that, there's a few people who have credit scores above 780 that don't do this, but almost all do. About 90% of people that have credit scores above 780 have at least two credit cards and they pay them once a month and their credit balances are in the two to 10% range. Well, so, so hold on, low. is 780 a, a score people should be shooting for? What is the score that they should be shooting for? 760 to 780 is what is generally considered to me super prime. It, there's a few places where you need to go all the way up to 780. Most of the time, 760 will suffice. At that point, you're going to get the best credit rate scores, or I should say, you're going to get the best interest rates possible on the loans. The only thing that will hold you back there is going to be your income. And so at 780, if you have a 781 and the guy next to you has an 842, guess what? You're going to get the same interest rates. All the other things being equal, you are the same. And so there's no need to try to get a perfect score of, of 850. 780 is good enough. Okay, so let me just let me just recap this. You've read uh, 10 million credit reports. In those, you've said two cards to at least 10% utilization max per month if you can do that. Don't use cards that have annual fees. You don't care about rewards. You don't. This is truly a tool to make sure that you get the lowest loan possible when you're making purchases that are not considered the daily, like food and beverages or things like that. So if you're buying a big purchase, like a car. Yeah, that, that's right. I'm not saying you can't use a, a car to make daily purchases and then pay it off at the end of every month. But what I am saying is you need two cards. You need to use them once a month and pay them in full. When you do that, it actually covers all of the bases that you need. So what Two I cards is the minimum. I really suggest doing it with three. What I think is fascinating is when you're talking about using them every month, we're not talking about a $600 payment or a $500 charge. You're talking about like literally Taco Bell once a month is just as good a payment reported to the credit bureaus as a $500 credit card payment is that right? your Netflix bill yeah yeah exactly I would I would say don't use the $500 charge don't go charge it a bunch of times literally go to Taco Bell you have the money in your pocket you pay for it with your credit card you put it in your checking account and then when the bill comes due you use that money in your checking account to pay the bill immediately so you never actually are using it for credit you're using it as just a tool in an intermediary to tell the credit bureaus and the credit scores that you have good credit and I even go better with, I say, that's where I go with the auto pay. Use it for your Netflix account and don't even carry the credit card around. Put your Netflix account, pay it with your credit card, pay your credit card automatically with your bank account. It's just adding a step in there in the middle. It all is done automatically and mm -hmm. it builds your credit for you to pay for something you're going to do anyway. What I like about that method is that it it caters to those people who know that pla they get into trouble with plastic, right? It's this idea of, unfortunately, we've gotten into this circumstance where if you're bad with money and you're bad at spending, you just can't have a credit card at all. But what you're saying is the best way to do this is to have that double auto pay, put your Netflix on it, put that card somewhere else and do not use it. Do not load it into your browser. Don't use it for online purchases. And that way you don't get into this this desire to use that card and to use that credit limit and it works perfectly for you and you don't need to carry it around it does not need to be in your wallet yeah you know I, that's a great thing i actually was talking to somebody 
couple of years ago, we were talking about using credit and credit cards and they probably gave me the most interesting piece of advice. It was something I think her mom said, which was take that credit card and put it in a block of ice and for, or put it in a cup of water or something and then put it in the freezer and freeze it. Now you literally have to work to get at it. Once you're using it for your Netflix account, you don't need it for anything else. It's there to build your credit so you don't need it. You have it and in case of emergency, break ice, get it out. Hopefully you never have to do that. But that's the whole idea of put it somewhere where you cannot easily get to it because you don't want to use it for anything other than that one monthly bill. While you're building your credit. While you're building your credit. Absolutely. That one monthly bill, it's all that card's for. You should do it forever. What do you mean by you should do it forever? At what point do you stop this process? You don't. Unless you're ready to get rid of credit altogether, then you don't do this. You just continue to do it. The age of credit is super important, and this gives you a free way to age your credit. So you just keep going with it. Is Dave Ramsey wrong? I want to hear it from <laughs> Steve likes to pick fights. I, is he wrong? He is not wrong that you don't want to carry debt. He is wrong that you should never carry a credit card. And if you need credit, if you're ever going to need credit, credit cards are the simple, easiest way to do it. So yes, in my opinion, he is wrong. You should have credit cards but you should be very specific about how you use them. Okay, so you're saying, I trust people that you can do this. And he's saying, I don't trust you that you can follow a process. And that is the difference. That's exactly the difference. I believe that you can do this process. You can use a credit card to your benefit and you can make it build your credit and improve your life, not just be a swipe and way to increase debt. I trust that people know what they're doing they understand what they're doing. And when you give them the information they need, they're going to do the right thing and they're going to help themselves. Credit cards are a tool. When you use them right, you can build fantastic credit, no debt, no processes. This is the knowledge that you need. Use it once a month, pay the bill every month, take that card, put it in the freezer, never look at it, never use it for anything else again. You do that with three cards, you're going to have a fantastic credit score. Assuming you just pay your other bills, it's going to give you everything you need to build a great credit score. And in fact, it'll build a base that's so good that if you have an occasional slip up, miss a payment here and there, it won't even make a dr drastic damage to your score. This is a key thing. And if you'll do that with those three cards, over time, you're gonna build a fantastic score. In a year, you're gonna have a good score, low 700s most likely. In five years, you're gonna have a high 700s or low 800s score, and it's gonna be rock solid and you can't break it. Great. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for uh, picking a fight with Dave Ramsey today. That was fun. Yeah. And uh, uh, hopefully everybody who listens to this will learn something. All right. Thanks for joining us for the UConn Project. Uh, we'll do another live event soon. Um, but if you guys have any questions, uh, post them in the link below and we will cover them in a future video. We are always happy to cover what interests you the most.